<laughs> Liquid metal. <laughs> it's a hell of a drug, you know. First, you delid your CPU, and then that high wears off. So then you like liquid metal your laptop, and again, you're rewarded with amazing temps and even a performance boost, and that keeps you going for another week or so. And then you notice something getting kind of hot in your pants. You know, the idea, it starts small, but then it grows and grows, getting more and more solid. What if you could make your phone run cooler and faster with liquid metal? Well, guess what? That's a super risky, maybe even bad idea. So we're gonna show you how to do it. After we tell you today's video is brought to you by Shade Tree Sunglasses. Shade Tree Sunglasses are handmade from hardwood materials featuring polarized lenses, a variety of designs, and even cool new carbon frames. Get 10% off your next order through our link below. So it is common for phone performance to nosedive during any workload that takes more than a couple of seconds, with gaming being a common culprit. So your processor starts out cool and fast, then the hotter it gets, the more it thermal throttles. So liquid metal likely wouldn't do anything for that initial cold performance, but it could allow us to maintain peak performance for longer. So we chose the Razer phone as our victim, <coughs> excuse me, uh, test subject. Compared to most phones, its thermal design is very respectable, but it is still not perfect. Check this out. Our first 3D Mark result puts us in the top 83% of Razer phones. So that looks pretty good. But then a second run immediately afterwards gave much worse results and it dropped all the way down to 20% worse after a 15 minute stress test. That is the kind of performance impact that you would notice in an extended mobile gaming session. So let's get started then. You'll need a good set of screwdrivers and prying tools, some isopropyl alcohol, some paper towel, some conformal coating, cotton swabs, and a heat gun, because getting inside phones sucks. And of course, you'll also need liquid metal. We'll be using Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut. Now your phone's disassembly process will be different, unless you have a Razer phone. But we'd recommend watching this whole process anyway without skipping around if you plan to follow along. So first, we made sure the device was off. Then we took a heat gun to the speaker grills. With the adhesive softened, we peeled them off with a prying tool. Next, we removed this combination of regular Phillips and Torx screws. We recommend always placing things like this in a parts tray in the same positions they came out of the phone in so you don't have to guess which ones go where during reassembly. Then we used guitar picks to keep the phone from snapping back together while we pried it apart until, well, it pried apart and the screen popped off. Then once we got inside, and took off the cables for the LCD screen and battery, giving us our first good look at the Razer Phone's heat pipe cooler. It's insulated from the battery and actually seems to be designed to use the screen to increase its surface area for heat dissipation. Pretty cool. With the stock thermal paste removed, it wasn't entirely clear actually how to proceed. We lifted this small copper heat spreader very carefully with a razor blade not to be confused with a razor blade, and then had a planning session. So if liquid metal gets on anything aluminum, the gallium in it will destroy it with corrosion. So what we've decided is to put the best thermal compound that we have between the copper sheet and the processor, and then liquid metal, the heat pipe, to the copper heat spreader with regular thermal compound all around it. Time then, to execute. We applied conformal coating around the CPU with a cotton swab to act as a line of defense if the liquid metal spills off the CPU. Then, to put our copper heat spreader back on, we used Arctic Silver Thermal Adhesive, which you mix up in equal parts and then spread across the surfaces that you want to stick together, just like an epoxy. We then cleaned the copper spreader and carefully placed it back on, removing any wrinkles with a guitar pick and clamping it all together for about 20 minutes to make sure that it was set. Moving over to the back of the screen, we applied a generous amount of thermal paste here, and then it was finally time for liquid metal. 
We put a small drop in a cleaned parts tray, then picked up a tiny bit with a cotton swab. This was carefully spread out over the copper heat pipe. You only need a little bit of this stuff to do the trick. Time for reassembly. If you are performing this mod on a Razer phone, by the way, I would strongly recommend that you get new speaker grills first because they don't just stick back on. So we used what we fondly refer to as that sticky tar crap to put them back on as best we could. Um, I, I give it a four out of 10. Anyway, hitting the power button, it boots. So now it's time for the payoff or lack thereof. We weren't sure given that we weren't liquid metaled all the way to the chip itself, if this was even really gonna work. So in 3D Mark, we immediately recorded our highest result yet, but not by a very significant margin. Cautious optimism at best at this point. Then on the second run, whoa, no decrease in performance whatsoever. Also in the Vulcan test, which comes after the OpenGL one is finished running, we went from very middle of the road performance compared to other Razer phones to being in the top 4%. And our other benchmarks saw modest gains in performance too. So this phone right here, it's got ugly grills, but you could game on it indefinitely and see virtually no drop in performance, an A plus result. So then, would we recommend performing this operation? The answer is no. Given the low mounting pressure for the cooler and the way that phones get moved and tossed around all the time, we believe that the chances of the liquid metal shifting and damaging the aluminum inside your phone or even shorting something out and bricking it entirely are too high. Also, we can't know how much of the performance increase came from the liquid metal and how much was simply from repasting the phone with a higher quality thermal interface material. So bottom line then, unless you're going for phone performance records, it's really cool and the results surprised even us, but I wouldn't recommend voiding your warranty over it. Speaking of things I would recommend, Ting is the mobile carrier that's focused on customer service and customer satisfaction. When you call Ting, you don't speak to a robot, you get put through directly to a person, and you don't pay extra for the privilege. The average Ting bill is just 23 bucks a month per device, and if you're stuck in a contract and switch to Ting, they'll cover 25% of your cancellation fee, up to 75 bucks. The cool thing about Ting is that you only pay for exactly the airtime and data that you use. And data is now just 10 bucks a gig beyond the first gig. So try out their savings calculator. It's over at linus.ting.com. We'll have that link below and find out if you would save money on Ting. When you sign up at our link, you'll get 25 bucks in service credit or towards a new device. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also linked down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. No one, no one needs to know. If this was Linus, it would have made it in the video, but fortunately, my incompetence generally goes under the radar. Do you actually think that the editor's are going to take the time to go through all this footage and listen to it? I, I really strongly doubt it.